Welcome back, everyone, to another Coach Blakers video. Um, I've, I've spent account after account after account trying to get this pick. So I just decided to play it on a Hylou account. This is going to be a diamond game. Um, like I said, I, I basically locked out like four accounts, five accounts for 12 hours because I died trying to get this gameplay. So hopefully this is a good gameplay. Hopefully I can teach you guys a little something. Um, I'm personally going to go Gathering Storm over throughout the course of the game. Your AP gets better, which means that your heals become stronger and you get stronger. Scorch is another option, but I just don't like it. The rest of the stuff pretty much is cut and dry. Um, I'm just going to go HP instead of armor. HP, I think, is just better. So, um, this game, like I said, I'm triggered. It took super, super long to get into this game, like over an hour of just dodging and not, and, and dodging and coming back and dodging and coming back and dodging and coming back uh, in order to get this game. So, basically, we're here now. If you guys are interested in coaching, coachblaker.com, coachblaker. Dot com is where you want to go again coachblaker.com if you guys are on the fence about coaching i do offer a uh a complimentary consultation basically we look at a game of yours we talk about the problems you may be having and just seeing if coaching is something that's right for you um because sometimes you don't know you know sometimes you're on the fence and if you are that's what you want to do uh okay so I want to teach you guys how to play Yumi the right way. There's a lot of Yumi players that don't really understand how to play Yumi the right way. And that's a huge, huge, huge issue. We're going to start Q. Oh, I couldn't quite get him. Run! Okay, so I always say if you're going to get poked heavily early you can start e if you're not you can start q because sivir's damage is primarily her q i'm not really too worried about our team getting poked out level one right because if you dodge the q she has no poke soraka can poke too but again you could dodge it so i'm not really too worried you take e in lanes that are like ash misfortune you know things that you can't really avoid being poked you're just going to get poked anyway so that's what i use to determine which one i want to go and which one i want to max um so the first one i'll go if we're gonna if I don't have to worry about healing, I'll go Q first. If I don't have to worry about healing, I'll go E first. If lane-wise, we're not going to be fighting that much, I'll max heal. If not, then I will be maxing um, Q. So Yumi has a cool little thing you can do with Aerie, where the Aerie, in order for Aerie to reset, it actually needs to come back to you, right? So if I constantly get on the jungler and then get back on my ADC and then get back onto the jungler, the jungler, that person has a permanent Aerie shield because every single time that she shields, you get Aerie. So something huge to keep in mind. Gonna just start with Q, and then we're gonna get off. Um, I shouldn't have got off like that, though, because she actually ended up getting a free hit onto me. We're gonna get back on, just to give them the bop and block shield, you know. Again, I wanna teach you guys how to play it the right way. Yumi's not all about sitting on people, but you have to time your aggression. Usually, you go aggressive when you can. Otherwise, you know, don't. So I'm waiting for him to go aggressive. When you're playing support, no matter which one it is, you have to wait for your ADC to go aggressive unless you guys are duo. Because a lot of the times, they don't know how to follow up. If they don't know how to follow you up, then, you know, you're going to be in a really, really horrible uh, situation. Oh, if he wouldn't have got hit by that, that uh, Soraka Q, she was dead. I could have got off and ignited, but I don't think the range was... Yeah, it wasn't. So we're just kind of sitting here. I'm actually going to help him shove because we want to crash the wave. Always pay attention, to the, pay attention to the wave state. Um, it's a pretty big thing. We know that he wants to crash the wave, so we're going to help him out. Although Yumi does have little weak auto attacks. It's still really huge. And a lot of people think Draven and Yumi don't go well together. But it's all about you guys having to play together. You know, you guys got to play in tandem. The jungler is Lilia. They, she decided to path top, so she shouldn't be down here. I don't know what she's doing. All right, buddy. We'll just go on her. We're gonna exhaust that one. We're gonna go on the rocker first. She should be dead. We go on him, hit her with the shield, hit him with the heal. Double kill, easy kill. Again, it's all about timing that aggression. Um, this guy's crazy, driven players usually are. But, you know, we're gonna max Q here because we are fighting a lot. We're gonna just help him shove because we don't wanna be here. 
And this is really how you want to play Yumi. She's a very strong, aggressive early game champion. It's just people don't think so. And especially in lower elo, you know, a lot of you guys don't think so. But she is. A lot of the ADCs don't think so. But she is. And so, it's something that you really have to keep in mind. Um, and again, I'm not forcing anything. I'm playing off of what he wants to force. If this was a different champion, it might be played a little differently. But that's the beauty of playing support, is understanding how your ADC plays and playing to them. That's the major part about playing uh, support. Just adapting. So we did burn everything. He's 2-0 right now. This is actually huge. Now we want to basically freeze the wave, right? We don't want to perma shove it. We don't want to keep fighting. We want to freeze. I don't know what he's going to do. I can't control that. He's the AD carry, not me. But if I were the AD carry, I would freeze it about right there where my mouse is. And uh, we would just keep clapping them whenever they walked up. But we'll see what happens. Right now, I don't want to get out because I don't really need to. The wave is going to push. There's no reason for me to get out. What I can do, though, is hold the wave for him. Um, okay, looks like he's holding it now. And basically, I was going to heal myself and get back onto him. And we can hold the wave like that for him. Something you want to think about. Not only can you block waves, but you can also block... Um, you could also block like skill shots and auto attacks from things like graves. We know that he's on dragon, but we can't really do much and we don't want to have a 3v3. Actually, we kind of do because Draven's strong. We might want to just go. We'll see. You might be mad at me for messing up the wave there. I actually just screwed him over a little bit. That was my apologies there. Luckily, he's not really tripping too hard about it, but I definitely just screwed his wave up. Which is why as a support, it's very important to think about stuff like that. Like, are you really going to mess up the wave? And if you do struggle with that, like I said, coachblaker.com. Um, you can go ahead and we can discuss things like that. If that is something that's probably wrong with your play. Whether you're ADC or support. So, we're still kind of just holding it. As I said, he's playing it right. Like, I would freeze too. This is perfect. We're just waiting. But now you notice we have more minions than they do. So, this means it's going to start slow pushing. So, I don't want to shove this wave in particular. I'll shove next wave. We're going to speed him up for the, for the movement speed. Okay, we get off and we just kind of pop with him. Perfect. Again, we pop with him. I can't really tank it, but I can heal him and get him in there. Perfect. You see how I didn't get back onto him and then get back off? Right? You see how I didn't do the bop and block on and then get back on? Because if I would have gotten on like this and then got back off, you see a 9 second cooldown. If I was on the cooldown as he was running under the tower, guess what? He dies. Right? So... He wants it to slow push back. But that's what I mean. Like, you have to understand how to play Yumi properly. She is super good when you understand what to do. You have to use your abilities properly. You have to use your cooldowns properly. It's really, really huge. And that, oh, she's starting to roam. She's mad. But that, I, <laughs> coffee lover. I like that name because I love coffee as well. But that is the type of way you want to play when you play Yumi, right? I have to think about when I'm gonna get off because I won't be able to get back on again. So yeah, I wanna get the pop and block shield and get off and then like, what is that gonna do if I can't get back on you anymore unless the jungler shows up? Or let's say he does something stupid and dives. Again, I don't wanna make the play. I want him to make the play. I'm gonna let him tank it here since we're high enough level. He's level five, I don't need to tank it. It doesn't really matter. Give him a little heal, try to keep him topped off. And we just kind of, we kind of chill. There's no reason for me to be off, right? Because there's no play to be made. When you get off as Yumi, you're getting off because you want to accomplish something. You don't get off for no reason, right? You don't get off to just try to show your presence. You get off if you're going to show your presence like that, you want to accomplish something. I'm about to pop in some auto attacks. I'm about to pop in some cues. A lot of the times you'll see Yumi players get off constantly and then get themselves killed. A lot of the times you'll see Yumi players um, sit on and don't ever get off, right? And they don't do much. It's a, it's a perfect balance, and that's why Yumi's actually a lot harder than people think, because a lot of people don't play Yumi properly. This is why I wanted to make this guide, I guess it's not really a guide, but this commentary, to teach you how to actually play Yumi properly. She's very good if you know how to play her. Um, so you see the wave slow pushing, and you see he's starting to clear the wave. So this tells me we want to push. We want to crash this wave under the tower, so that's what we're going to do. What? That should have hit. I have six. He knows I have six. Um, I don't really want to dive yet. I'm going to start popping my potions, though. I 
missed. She's really, really low. He's gonna go for it. I healed to get over to him quicker. Um, I actually wanted to tank it, but I didn't do any damage. I think she might have spell shielded it. We could just, yeah, we can go after Soraka if she decides to walk up. I'm gonna continue to pop my potions. If I take minion aggro, I'll just automatically heal it up. It's not really a problem. That was a good juke. If he goes on her, I'll just ignite her, so I take aggro first. To be very, very careful, I'm gonna pop a ward right here. We're gonna, you know, top him off real quick. To be careful, because he might be in this bush. Yep. Cool. I thought so. Bolly bear's coming. We're gonna chill for a second. We know Lily is here. I mean, I don't know what she thought she was gonna do. Oh, I should've just hit him. Or ignited him, that was my bad. We just dive though. We're gonna sit on volley. I have ignite, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna ping that my heal is almost up. I'm gonna get off for a second. I don't know when though. Okay, we got off now. We just gotta make sure we get off properly. He's about to, he's about to, yeah. I got healed a couple. Ah, uh, damn. Damn. He played that bad. They both played that really, really bad. But that's fine. Everybody makes mistakes. Uh, pretty sure I can't hold that. We got tower, though. Not too bad. Oh, he got it. Huge. We're actually gonna get movement speed here. I think it's way better. So you have two options as uh, you mean. You can get the Moonstone or you can get the, um, you can get the Moonstone or you could get the, what is this? Where is it, where is it? Oh, it's gone. You get the Moonstone or you can get the Shirelius. Mandate, eh. I don't really think I like that too much, but it is an option as well. Movement speed. You get Shirelius. Our team is all about chasing people down. We have Renekton, we have Silas. We have, like, this is all about chasing, right? Whereas Moonstone is more about shielding. So if you have a lot of champions, that's good on healing. You have a lot of champions, that's good on, like, shielding and whatnot. It's a really good combination. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my AD carry because he's about to end without me, per usual. You know how they do. I'm going to put a pink right there. I probably should have killed the ward and then put a pink so that they didn't know I put a pink there. But because I put the pink down, they actually know that it's there. I'm gonna try to ward a little bit closer. Be very cautious when you're warding as Yumi because you're so squishy. He wants to have the tower kill as many minions as possible. That's why he's holding it. Very good tactic for an ADC player if you guys didn't know that. You can bleed the enemy dry because if you do break the tower, it's gonna push, it's gonna go to that tower and they're gonna get more minions. Whereas if you just wait a second, they get less. So just another tactic. We could pretty much run it down here. We should be going to Rift Herald, but I seen I think Soraka was topside. So we should be able to just run it down and just straight up kill her. I'm surprised he didn't go for that. What did she say about a giant pile of stones? I'm shocked he didn't go for that. Like I was down. Nice. I was down. I was about to go out of one for that if I was him. But I guess he wasn't prepared. I should have pinged him. That was my fault. Um. Don't know why. Oh. Don't know why he's pinging me. I'm trying to break tower, bro, bro. What are you doing? What are you doing with your life, homie? You be talks a lot, don't you? We want to make sure we're moving on to the top of the side of the map now. I'm gonna hang with him. See what he's hang let's see what he's doing, but we want to go to the top side of the map now. Because we want to spread our gold out, right? Draven's big, he's cool, but we don't want to sit on this guy. If we can make You're kidding. You're kidding. If we want to um start spreading our lead around, we want to start going to help players around the map now. A good thing you could do is you could buy a Dark Seal. If you feel like you have no more if you had no gold for nothing, you could buy a Dark Seal. It'd be a, it'd be a fine purchase. He's gonna die. We wanna ping him back. If he dies, he dies. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Um, 
We're going to go ahead and go with, I believe Crucible doesn't wake you up from sleeps. Knock up some suppression, so it does wake you up from sleeps. So we can go ahead and buy the Crucible for for this game. Or we can go Ardent Sensor. Nah, Crucible, I think, is the play. Because if somebody gets put to sleep, it's a wrap. Also, Soraka's Silence, is, our Snare is annoying, so we're going to build for that. We'll go ahead and sit on Draven because I'm slow. All right, and now we just kind of want to think about, we're, and, and again, we're playing Yumi, but that doesn't mean we don't do anything, right? We're still a support player. We still have macro. We still understand how to play League of Legends. So when we think about it, there's nothing up, right? That's not up. That's not up. Everything's not up. So what do we do? We do what every support player does. We go mid and play mid until something actually happens. I want to go ward, but I'm going to wait until I see people. So Lily is there, Set's there, and we know Corky's middle. So if I do get off to go ward, it's not going to kill me. The only person I'm going to run into is Sivir, right? So it's it's fine. Oh, he's coming. Cool. I can ward with him. We're just going to put wards. I'm glad he missed. And then we're probably going to put a pink here. And now everything's pretty much warded bot side. Uh, I don't really want to fight that. You need to back up, bro. You need to back up, bro. This guy's crazy. So right there we could have killed, but like why, right? Why fight right there if we don't have to? We can fight here though. We're gonna get on the volley here. We're gonna get on the Silas here. We're gonna get on the Renekton because he's tanking. And again, a good Yumi reads the fight. The good Yumi understands like what's happening. Well, you know, what's the stuff? We're gonna get on, um... Okay, I was gonna go ahead and pop on set real quick. Get off an auto attack. It's okay. You know, you don't have to sit and do nothing. Help your team. Again, Yumi's played things so incorrectly sometimes. And you don't have to do all of this. What the what? Okay, now we gotta be careful. Because if this dude W's me, I, I can't get back in. We'll sit on Draven just to make sure he gets out alive. Put a ward there just to see which way they're going to go after they come out base. We're recalling now. I'm going to just wait to... Uh... Alright, whiffed. We ignited him. It's fine. Bro, that's balanced. Corky does way too much damage. I don't know, bro. Yeah, I don't want to fight that. We can just get dragged, man. I can't back because of Corky. So. Okay. Oh, he's dead. Cool. Alright. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And you want to be careful when you're bouncing on people because they automatically assume you want to fight. They automatically assume they can fight. And a lot of the times they can't, and Yumi's will be sucked into that. So you really got to be cautious about who you're sitting on and what you're doing. Again, the right way to play Yumi is to understand that you're not just an, uh, uh, like, a, like a like a pet, I guess is the best way to say it. You actually are a player. You are a support. You do exactly every, what everybody else does. You just don't walk. Only difference is I just do not walk. That's it. That's the same. And you have to adapt the style like this because... If you don't, you're going to lose a lot of games, and you're going to be flamed a lot. And honestly, when I play this in lower elo, I mean, I consider this still kind of low elo, I'm not going to lie to you guys, but when I play it in stuff like gold or platinum, a lot of the time, supports don't, or champions, I don't even say champions, players just don't realize that Yumi can roam. Players don't understand anything about Yumi. They just think she just sits there and does nothing, which is why usually in high elo, she gets through a lot more than lower elo, because people in high elo know how to deal with the Yumi that does nothing, right? You're probably just going to lose the game, shut off the bat. In order to win, you have to do things. You have to be a little bit more mobile. You have to attack more. You have to, you know, you really have to do everything that you can. We are really, really late to this fight. I should have picked them back. I was just caught up talking. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we win. I have Crucy for him. Nice. Exhaust. Get clapped. 
You didn't do anything there. I actually did. I ignited. I exhausted. I ard in the right direction. When you ult, you always want to ult to where your your whoever you're sitting on is going, right? You have to realize how how are they gonna line it up, and then you ult based off of that, right? Again, help your team. You don't have to sit on and do nothing. I still have Crucible. I still have Crucy if he needs it. He's not needing it yet though. I don't want to get off because I don't want to get stunned. He's probably waiting for that moment. We still win. We still win that fight though. Like, that's free. Just go. I'm ignite him. Crucy right now. Oh, never mind. He walked out of it. I thought he was gonna get snared. Ah, uh, Crucy, uh, Silas, just to give him a little bit of HP from the item itself. And now we just win game. Again, it's really just based off how you play Yumi yourself. It's not about I sit on and pray my team does well. If you do that, you're going to lose a lot more games than you win. It's a mixture. So I hope this helped you guys. I hope you guys understand um, how to play Yumi. I hope you guys understand the right way to play Yumi, not the wrong way to play Yumi. Um, it is a uh, it is a an art. Playing Yumi is not easy. A lot of people think it is easy. It's 100% an art. I promise you, you have to get good at it, though. Once you get good at it, you will shine, and you will probably win a lot more games than you lose. The, like I said, it is an art. She's not easy. So anyone who's like, Yumi is, Yumi is easy. Yumi does nothing. All you do is sit there and blah, blah, blah. That's like further, further from the truth than anything ever, okay? So just keep in mind that... Uh, if you want to be successful with Yumi, you do have to think outside the box. You do have to read fights. You do have to read games. You have to make sure that you play on a, on a higher level scale because your champ is a very difficult champ to perform properly unless someone's already fed, in which case you just kind of sit on them, right? But if you want to make your own leads, you want to make your own openings, you really do have to play this champion um, really really well so thank you guys for watching peace be slightly late as i said if you guys are interested in coaching coachbreaker.com is where you want to go if you are unsure about coaching then of course like i said i have a complimentary uh consultation on my site it's 100 percent free um we basically meet up look over a game of yours we discuss issues you may be having and see if coaching is something for you please only serious people take that though because i don't want you guys wasting my time your time or anybody else's time that i could be using that for so again thank you guys for watching have a good rest of your day or night if you've got any questions let me know my discord of course have a good Again, rest of your I keep saying that. Thank you guys for approaching this like a coach.